schedule. All right. We've known about that we've Since known about it in development. Couple months now it's starting. Now to launch. we can talk about it. Yeah, and yeah. Mason's here to tell us all about it. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Perfect. Good intro. All right. Ready? All right. Hey gang. So as you may remember, this is Mason from Tulip from our Tulip visit a few months ago. Um, Obviously, the whole reason we're here, the primary reason we moved our schedule to get to this show was so that we could see Frontline Copilot, which is Tulip's implementation of essentially ChatGPT for the frontline worker. Mason's gonna to explain to us its application, and I'm gonna talk a little bit at the end where I actually think this applies uh, at scale for organizations. But Mason, Thanks, Dan. What Joe. is Frontline Copilot? Uh, I'm super excited to launch okay. it here today. Uh, Frontline Copilot is our new assistant to help frontline operations with all of their day-to-day -day work. We want to augment the human, help the human do their job more efficiently, faster, better, all of that. It's to assist the person. That's why it's Copilot. Right. We're not trying to take that away. So similar in similar into the way that GitHub has Copilot for software developers. Exactly. Right. This is the same thing for frontline operators. It makes the software developers life easier. This is designed to make the operators exactly life easier. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I have three main areas I'm going to show off here. One is where this actually affects apps. How can citizen developers start building apps with ChatGPT today? Okay. Two, how can you start? How are we helping people create content and build things in Tulip faster than they could before? Okay. And three, how are we helping people understand their data in Tulip and be able to ask questions of it and interpret it and things like that? Awesome. Can't wait cool. to see. Let's All kick right. it off. So first here, I have my uh, my app that I've built with some of these uh, new actions that we have available here. Okay. This one, uh, this first one, super simple. Translate. I can enter text in here on the left. I can pick a language and I can translate it into whatever language I need. This supports all of the 26 languages that Tulip supports. We see a lot of awesome use cases for this, trying to normalize content coming from operators, right? Maybe they speak a different language than the manufacturing engineer. Normalize it all to one language so you can easily understand all your defect reports or issues all together. So I just language. did this the other day. I had a conversation with a girl from Colombia yep. who's in our community who speaks Spanish, yeah. and I, I was using ChatGPT for the, the conference. It the works so well, right? right? It works incredibly well. Exactly. She had no idea that I couldn't. That you could. Exactly. I couldn't. I couldn't speak Spanish. Precisely. Right? So great we application. Also extended this into the app editor itself, so I can now go here and add a new language, say Chinese, hit translate, and now all of a sudden my entire app is translated into Chinese. Wow! It's a great way to suddenly start adding new support. I can go in here, switch, boom, everything's in Chinese, done automatically. Wow, so now you think about this in other platforms, right? So you think about, in, in, in other platforms, you have to use lookup tables. Yeah. So what you're going to have is column one for English, yep. column two for Chinese, column three for Spanish. Someone has to populate those lookup forms, and that was six seconds. Five, yeah. And we translated like the entire app. Whoa, and yeah. it's now seen in context. You can go in and, oh, maybe this is wrong. I'm going to go just quickly edit that, update it. I know where it's used. I know how it's used. I can make sure it's the correct string awesome. for my use case. Awesome. So now, well, I don't speak Chinese. Let me switch this back to English here. <laughs> so in, in the vein of uh, triggers, the next thing I want to show is talking to a PDF. And I think you saw this one when you were in the yes, office. This we, was the first one. The shush, talked. shush, uh, yes. hush, hush one. Yeah. Yes. This is the one I wasn't allowed to talk about. Yeah. All right. This app integrates with a PLM. It's pulling in a bunch of PDFs from a, P, a PLM. They're all third party. We said, hey, we're building this part. It said, here's all the relevant documentation. So I have opened up here uh, some work instructions for some large electrical component. I can go ahead and ask that PDF a question. So let's say, where do I do the resistance test? Hit ask, and it's now gonna go understand the content of this entire PDF and pull out an answer. This will work in whatever language, no matter the language of the PDF. Wow. So it's given me an answer here based on what was in this PDF. Now, this is an also an important thing. Let's say I ask it something silly, right? How do I bake a cake, right? It's going to come back and tell me I don't know. It's not going to make up an answer about yeah. how to bake a cake right. based on how are, how, So for the technical, for the technocrat out there, yeah, yeah. how are you achieving that? Because yeah. this is something right now, if you guys are using the ChatGPT plugin that allows you to upload a document to ChatGPT, and then you can ask ChatGPT things about that document, one of the things you will know is that it will tell you things about that document that are not true. Yeah. How are you doing that? So it's sort of a two-phase approach. First, we're taking the question and finding which pages of the PDF are high similarity to that question. 
Gotcha. We're using a technique called embeddings and saying, okay, which of these are close to which pages of the PDF? The answer might be zero pages are close to this question. Right. Probably what happened here, and it said, I can't answer that question. We then, assuming there are relevant pages, pass that into a prompt and say, only using this information. Do not use any other information. What was blah, 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 Got blah. It. So combo of both sort of belt and suspenders there to try to prevent it from doing something and, and this, And this, what do you guys call, I, I still don't know all the tool of Blingo. Yeah. So I'm used to calling them components. You guys call them? Widgets. Widgets, okay. Yeah, yeah. So a widget, what about the widget? It, what about the widget is unique? So, for example, is the prompt in the widget? No. Okay. So let me let's actually just take a look at this app. We can go edit it right here. Um, so the prompt's just the interface to the or the widget's the interface to the prompt. Yes. Ah, got it. Okay. So where is it? My documents. Uh, here we go. So the goal here is to give Legos. Right? How do we enable the citizen developer to start doing interesting things with these? We don't want to give them, this thing only does X. We want to give them the capability to combine this together in ways that we can't think of yet. Right? Give it to the person who knows the job the best. Got so it. here, all this is, is a single trigger, AI, answer question from document, given this URL, given this question, store the answer here. Right? Now, you can show that on the screen. You could just show the page numbers. You could not show the answer. You could only show the answer. You could store it in a table. You could have any PDF coming into this. You could have an image coming into this. Whatever you need, we want it to be flexible and adapt and fit with the rest Does of the Does this computer. change pricing? Like, are, cause, cause, yeah. you, cause you guys have to pay for the, 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 the elasticity of the cloud, right? So, so it does change pricing. Can you explain a little bit how We're that still changes? working that through. Right okay. now we're in beta. Part of what beta means and what it'll take to get to general availability is figuring out exactly what we want to do for pricing. Got it. Now obviously there are additional cloud costs with all of this. Right. We're going to give some, for the beta, we're going to give some amount to customers in the program that they can use on a monthly basis. Past that, we're still figuring out if we need to do some sort of usage-based pricing here to better reflect our costs through this. Right. And, so and, we're yeah, that. looking at it, I think what well, you're going to have our right. If you if we look at the technology S curve, right in the yeah. beginning, you're going to have low usage. But then all of a sudden, but if this gets used on a line gonna, every minute, it's going to skyrocket, right? Exactly. Because as yeah. people as people realize value from the feature, they yeah. use the feature more. Right? Precisely. And you have to be able to calculate that into TCO. So yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, any. Let's go to the next one. Next so, uh, second I have here, I'll, I'll skip this one actually. This is the one I'm most excited about. We just showed this for the first time yesterday. Oh, okay, so you already moved to this. So you guys vaguely, you, you we were starting to hint this. at this before, okay, yeah. yeah. Right. We're ready, so we're starting to show this off today, All right. or yesterday. Uh, so here I have a tulip table. This is the data model behind an app. It's user created, all of these columns are defined by the user. This one represents activity history on a number of stations. I have some status, I have some duration, I have what station it was running on, as well as part count, right? So this is basically manufacturing events. That's what it is yeah, from the app. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It could be whatever, though. It could be purchase orders, it could right. be parts produced, it could be defect reports. In this case, it's activity, right? right. I now have a uh, chat interface, like an assistant over here on the right, that I can start interacting with at a high level and ask it questions. So let's start with a simple one. Show me uh, dur some duration uh, by station. Now it's going to go understand my question, understand the context of the table I'm on, and generate an analysis for me. And that part's really critical. We're generating this analysis in the same format that all of our other analyses, analyses are in, okay. so that I can go and edit this. I can save it to a dashboard. I can add an alert on top of this. It integrates with everything else wow, we do, and I can understand what it did. So I can now learn how Tulip's analytic editor works and make sure it did the right thing that I wanted it to do. So how well, as it stands right now, we're in beta, right? You, yeah. You know, so essentially what we're doing is we're, what's happening here is factory co-pilot is turning everyone into data analysts. Yes. Right? It, it, it's literally it lowers enabling, that barrier eventually. Right, it's yeah. literally enabling citizen developers and operators to be data analysts. Exactly. So now we no longer have to send heaps of data to a data analyst to call and then report where we, we don't have to ask the report builder to do the data to build our report for us. What we have to do while we're doing is asking Copilot 
to put that together for us, much in the same way with Super ask. fast, super so, quick. It like, enables like understanding this in the speed of thought, right? Like you can say, okay, let me ask another question and iterate on this thing and dig into my data really quickly without it to be, okay, I'm gonna go make a new analysis 10 minutes later, okay, I got my answer. What was I thinking about again? Just like a really here, fast Here's the time. crazy thing, here's what I think about it. It's not even so much, here's what it is. Let's say I'm an operator and I'm not sure that pivoting the data in a certain way is going to be valuable to me. Yeah. Right. Asking to report it in a certain way is going to be valuable valuable to me. I can test whether it's valuable myself. Yes. Right. If I have Copilot available, if I'm a supervisor, whatever, I can I can work through the value of the data before I then take it to my data team to ask them to harden it for the whole organization. I now, mean, that's really crazy. The other part of this that's really cool is it's not just analytics. You can also have it semantically understand your table. So let's say you have a table of defect reports. You can ask it, how do I fix a stitching defect? What causes gluing defects? And it'll interpret the data in that table and synthesize an answer based on top of it. How, how, so you, so those of you guys don't know, Mason is the head of engineering. He, all of the, all the development of the platform falls under his yep. purview. Okay, so. There is no better person to speak to the reliability. Happy to, so, yeah. So where you are right now, we're going into beta. Yep. Launched it yesterday. Obviously, it's in its early, early, early stages. Phases. Yeah, yeah. How confident you, are you in the outcomes or the responses you're getting? You're, you're confident. So let me break it down sort of first. Yep. The trigger side, fully confident. We're yep. starting to give this to customers on their production instances. They're rolling with it. They're using it day in, day out. A lot of these use cases are fairly simple, yep. right? Like translate, but valuable, but super simple, valuable, simple, but That's very where valuable. That's why we're right. starting there, right? right? Not, oh, hey, go use AI, but no, fix these problems right. that you have. Right. Doesn't matter how you fix them. The tech isn't the important part. It's fixing the it's problems. fixing the problem. Exactly. Right. So these fully confident, ready to roll. Most of the things we're figuring out here are on the business side with pricing and things like that, right? right? This, uh, we're running internal tests. We currently have on our sample set of data 92% accuracy okay. on our test. That's pretty good. good I'm number. happy with that. It's a good number. I want to get it higher and I want to make sure that the 8% that fail, fail loudly and don't make a bad answer. What I say is this, is that in, in this day, in this, where we stand right now, if you've got 80% reliability or higher, yeah. you're on the right track. Yeah. If you're under 80, then, but if, in 92 is, is but one also, of the high, that's if a really fails, high number for right It now. shouldn't say, oh, here's the answer, and then right. have it be a wrong Fail answer. Fail loudly. That's right. way worse right. than, yeah, I can't answer it is what you want. It's a fine answer. Happy right. for it to do that. And, yeah. Okay, so now I'm a, either I use Tulip or I don't use Tulip, and now I'm interested, I, holy shit, yeah. I want frontline co-pilot. Yeah. Those who are using Tulip, they have to join a beta program to yep. use? Okay. So uh, you can email copilot at tulip.co. We're starting our beta program now. Uh, right now, that's the triggers thing that I just showed you there. We're using yeah. it within an app. And then the, this table uh, copilot will be going into beta. I'm guessing Q4 or early next year. And you're and you, and as head of engineering, when do you hope to have this ready for wide release? We so we do long-term support releases every six months. We we're about to release LTS 11. Uh, so I'm targeting LTS 12 for a lot of these features. Is the like full, like stable, ready to use in a bunch of use All right, cases. Awesome. So what that means is this: go ahead and email copilot at tool.co. Yep. If you want to be a beta tester. Uh, what we'll do is try to do a, a whole host of other demos of this. Yeah. So uh, come up with a bunch of other use cases, get them out on the YouTube channel. We'll talk about it at IoT.University. Mason, thanks for your time, brother. I appreciate thanks. you. Yeah, this awesome. is fucking sick. Thanks. Man, you, guys, you, guys I'm you guys slayed it. You guys slayed it, man. Awesome. Dude, cool. way to go. Thanks.